Western Central Europe in the 5th century, the power of the Western Roman Empire is crumbling. For the following centuries, written sources report more than a dozen major migrations. Different peoples and powers succeed each other in the region. Huns, Goths, Avars, Slavs, Franks and others. That was the period known as the Migration Age. But are the colourful, popular images of that period correct? We take a closer look at many individuals of the period whose graves have been excavated. How were the people who lived in the Carpathian Basin affected by all these changes? Did ruling groups come and go, or did entire populations shift? The Histogenes project, funded by the European Research Council, addresses these questions. For the first time, it will unite researchers in all the disciplines involved – archaeology, history, anthropology and genetics. Research centres in Austria, Hungary, Germany and the US work together with scholars in many other countries. Our goal is to understand European population change and living conditions during the crucial period between the dissolution of the Roman Empire and the emergence of medieval European states from the 5th to the 9th centuries. Follow us as we visit the archaeological collections, laboratories and research institutions where our team members are working together. The project is coordinated at the Austrian Academy of Sciences in Vienna, where an interdisciplinary team is at work. The task of the archaeologists is to collect data from cemeteries, to interpret them and to insert them into our database. The shape and location of burial pits, equipment, clothing and grave goods of the deceased. The anthropology team at the Natural History Museum in Vienna collects data on the skeletons and prepares them for the extraction of the samples. It studies traces of diseases and of violent or accidental injuries and uses advanced techniques to gain insights into the living conditions of individuals and communities of the past. A team of historians at the University of Vienna works on narrative sources from the period. How were the peoples of the Carpathian Basin described by their neighbours? Many authors relate prejudices against so-called barbarians. To describe the foreign and bewildering world of the steppe, they used familiar ethnographic schemes. The men like to play chupu and the women football. You may be surprised to hear that Turkic women played a game similar to football to train their martial skills. We compare Chinese descriptions of the customs of steppe peoples like this to European ones. Where do they match? Remains of many kingdoms of the period have been found in Hungary. The area of Europe with the highest number of population shifts is almost like a laboratory in which the impact of historically documented migrations can be studied. At the Institute of Archaeological Sciences, our team collects and elaborates detailed information about almost a hundred sites under study. 25 museums and more than 50 researchers from six countries are involved in sampling and analysis from the Middle Danube region. 
in-depth archaeological analysis can define internal chronology of the sites, but we also study migration, cohabitation, social differences, cultural contacts at community and, and also regional level. Let's next visit the genetics laboratory of the Institute of Archaeogenomics in Budapest. The team of geneticists and anthropologists collects, documents and samples skeletal material. Minimal amounts of bone powder are drilled from the petrous bone, which preserves most ancient DNA under sterile conditions to minimize modern DNA contamination. Thousands of samples are prepared here and transported for further processing to Leipzig. Samples from teeth are collected for the analysis of isotopes of carbon, nitrogen and strontium, conducted at labs in Mannheim and Cape Town. These tests can tell us about people's diet, whether they had grown up locally or not, and help to date their skeletal remains. Welcome to the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, where scientists receive the prepared samples. They capture genetic information that is passed down from parents to children using the most advanced techniques. The resulting data can help us reconstruct historical migrations, changes in population size and family relations. To understand these patterns, it's important to capture a wide range of regional and social diversity. In histogenes, we analyse an unprecedented number of samples from more than 6,000 individuals. This is by far the largest project in the ancient DNA field and can only be achieved by using automation and using robots to do the DNA extraction as well as the library preparation of our ancient DNA. We're not just analyzing petrous bones in order to study the human DNA, we're also looking at teeth in order to get ancient pathogens that have been present during the death of those individuals in the past. And by then studying the genomes of those ancient pathogens, we learn something about the causative agents of past pandemics, as well as the evolution of those bacteria and viruses through time. And that also tells us something about the potential impact that those pathogens had on human history. Even more work is happening in the computation centres after sequencing. The analysis of the terabytes and terabytes of the data on personal computers would take centuries, so the team relies on supercomputers. We are developing automatic bioinformatic pipelines and statistical methods, not least in order to correct the damage that ancient DNA sustained while lying in the ground for hundreds of years. These sensitive methods allow us to find distant relatives, reconstruct genealogies and detect subtle similarities and differences between regional groups. In this way, they can shed a new light on how these groups formed, how they moved through time and space and how they interacted with one another. Over in New York, the Virama Laboratory at Stony Brook is helping to make sense of the vast amounts of DNA sequence data produced by histogenes. The population geneticists at the lab develop and apply advanced computing for finding biological relationships amongst ancient individuals. They also explore new ways of combining the information from ancient DNA with archaeological, anthropological and historical data. This requires constant online communication with the European colleagues. Because of the time difference, that means getting up early in the morning. For the joint interpretation of the data, we also rely on the project database, which assembles all types of information collected by histogenes. Maps of archaeological sites, details about graves and the skeletons, images and descriptions of finds, and overviews of the genetic and isotopic data. The Institute for Advanced Study facilitates the ongoing exchange on the interpretation of the manifold new evidence. What does it tell us about the history of Central Europe during this complex and crucial period? How can we reconstruct a multi-dimensional image of these little-known societies? 
The result will be not only a deeper understanding of migration and mobility, but also an intimate view of the lives of the women and men who moved across or settled in this region. We will find out more about their diet, their health, their local and regional customs, and how they structured their families, their communities, and their world. Thank you.